I just wanted to make a quick video today to clear up some confusion. In the past, I think my opinion on certain cards in Gwent has been misrepresented. I want to fix that here today. Uh, this is most true for my personal favorite card in the game, and the one whose release helped me have so much fun in Gwent. And I'm talking about Renfrey. So, in the past, I may have accidentally made some offhand comments suggesting I don't like Renfrey. That's not true, so today I wanted to go through some of the reasons why I think she's the best designed, most balanced, and the most fun card they ever added to Gwent. Just edging out a Golden Necker and the Night Provision Erendite release combination, because that was also really good. But first, let's talk about the art. Renfrey's premium art is one of my favorites. I also really liked how on the release of her expansion, I don't actually know what the expansion's called, it's just basically the Renfrey expansion. So we were able to enjoy her art as a full HD live wallpaper, thanks to the bug that came with the release that stopped the game from opening. I really loved that, and it got me excited to see more of her in the game. But next we need to talk about her representation from the Witcher lore. As we all know from the books, Renfrey was clearly and unambiguously shown to have incredible power, making her one of the strongest characters in the series. And although the power level of characters in the lore isn't always perfectly translated to Gwent, I'm glad at least hers was. But now let's get on to the real reasons, the gameplay reasons. So it's impossible to overlook just how much variety Renfrey added to the game. She was a neutral card, and as a neutral card any deck could run her. This meant of course that you had to play the 25 units to meet her conditions, but that only led to more fun and diverse deck building. Which is personally my favorite thing about the game, is the amount of deck building you can do. So there are many balance limitations with her card. It led to such a lack of control and tutors in many different decks you built with her. So why would you just play the 25 cards needed? Or would you play the 26 cards to fit no Nyromancy to find her? Because you didn't draw her, your entire deck building was basically pointless. Or would you play 27 cards and go Oniromancy and sit up to make up for the lack of control her decks usually had, and just run a whole bunch of bronzes? These choices and the many interesting and unique combination of gold cards that were in each different Renfrey deck really brought a lot of unexpected surprises to each game. But we can't talk about Renfrey without mentioning the decks. She single-handedly created the most diversity and fun, really, in different types of decks you could see. You could play Renfrey Pirates, Renfrey Handbuff, Renfrey Assimilate, Renfrey Imprisonment, Renfrey Vampires, Renfrey Pincer Maneuver, and Renfrey Blood Money, although I think the Renfrey Imprisonment and Assimilate were by far the most popular choices there. And since they're Nilfgaard, everyone likes Nilfgaard decks, so it really made her even more popular. These decks were all actually so unique that it made the ladder really fun, since even though 70% of the decks on the ladder was a Renfrey deck, each one was completely unique. And not to mention that her addition to the game made previously meme leaders become meta since the synergy between a leader ability and the deck was now what made them go well with Renfrey instead of just their reliance on having a strong single ability that didn't really interact with the deck. So the deck building requirements also really incentivized the use of other mechanics and cards that used stuff that weren't really common in Gwent. Uh, this best example of this is stuff like RNG, which everyone knows is the best mechanic for a strategic game like Gwent. It's really what was missing from the game in my opinion, and what I missed most about Hearthstone back when I played it. All the Nilfgaard players who hadn't played Hyperthin or Siri Nova yet realized just how good Vilgefortz was, and the fear of if they'd mill your finisher randomly during the game added a lot of excitement to each match. Then since all the Renfrey decks also played Rune Mage, you could face any bronze from any faction in the game. And personally, watching a Squiatel player generate a Kingslayer and banish my Triss Meteor Shower right before I was going to draw her, it's my favorite example of this. The rise in the use of Ehorax as well to try and mill Renfrey, and then at pulling out your Fakushi every game because you didn't have the skill to draw it was another fun interaction is promoted, and these elements really let you punish players for their inferior digital shuffling and drawing abilities. So I'm really glad that the addition of Renfrey led to the propagation of such fun mechanics like this. What really made her my favorite card was the deck building requirement and balanced reward for meeting such harsh conditions. And in many ways it was like Shoop, right? It allows a small group of players to experiment with an interesting idea and make do with the most consider a suboptimal deck building in exchange for a powerful card. And the restriction was actually so difficult they had to add Renfrey's Gang, the best thinning card in the entire game, to help players meet it. Otherwise, how would you be able to use Renfrey? And just like Shoop, the ability to replay Renfrey three times a game was actually really fun to see people full off, and whenever they did it, it really felt like they'd earned the win. So that's the truth about what I think about my favorite Gwent card, Renfrey. It's just such a shame she had to receive so many nerfs and changes after her release, so people weren't skilled enough to include her in their own decks to beat her. What other deck was keeping the Insane Sir Scratch Lot decks from the same expansion in check? I mean, part of why they were so prevalent and successful certainly wasn't the overwhelming number of Renfrey decks that all lacked easy answers like Heatwave or Muscle to stop Sir Scratch Lot. 
In any case, I'm just glad now that we can still see Renfrey today. It brings back such fond memories of my favorite Gwent meta, and it's a perfect example of the game's best card design and balancing. Anyway, thanks for watching this. Hopefully that cleared up the confusion, and we'll see you next time.